Now to formally welcome our chief guest, may I invite Bhagwan to present bouquet to Professor Nevasi. Now may I invite Jaspreet to present bouquet to Professor Arvind.
Now may I invite Harshita to present a bouquet to Dr. N.G. Prasad. Thank you. So this conference, which we have conceptualized in 2019 October, when we had a meeting in JNRC Bangalore, then the purpose of this conference, bringing to Northern India, was that here we lack most of the studies on evolutionary biology. So we had a discussion over there, and Professor Meva Singh proposed. I was of the view that it should go to Aisar Mohali, but he su he suggested that he mender Patiale ki uni jaise ki. So he is quite instrumental in bringing it over here. But it was thought of having the conference, I think, in 20, but due to COVID pandemic, it we keep. It has pending and now it's the time, but most uh, we have now 16 lectures, eight from abroad and eight from India. And all those lectures, ultimately, when the, it's over, they will go to YouTube. And as far as department is concerned, uh, the first information which says on insect systematics. So our department is quite rich in entomology collections and we have discovered more than 1,000 new species of insects. And this is one of the best departments in entomology all over India. <laughs> then we thought that it is better to inter intermingle systematics and evolution. Because nowadays, they intermingle with each other. And it is better that whatever research we produce and whatever I see daily on daily basis, that is my viewpoint. Because most of the research, what we do, is just on a daily basis. That is a sort of momentary research, but nowhere do we think that it has some longer reach. Like it took 25 years to Darwin to produce theory of natural selection. So it, it's a historical thing which takes a lot of time to do such kind of things. That's why evolution comes into play everywhere. And interestingly, when I talk to my students, especially of five-year integration, then I ask them that such conference we are organizing, so what is your contribution? And uh, it was quite an emotional moment for me when they came to me and said that we are preparing models on natural selection, adaptive radiation, Darwin's finches, so and speciation too. So they, they are putting up the stall outside, so we can have a look on that also. So. Now, may I invite Professor N.G. Prasad to tell you about Indian Society of Evolutionary Biologists. Good morning, Good morning. Professor Arvind, Professor Valia, Professor Mehra Singh, Dr. Bhakti, all the colleagues, especially the students here. Uh, on behalf of uh, Indian Society of Evolutionary Biologists, I would uh, welcome you all warmly to this uh, conference. Let me begin by thanking the Vice Chancellor, the other dignitaries, the other officers of the university for allowing yes. us to partner in this conference. We are very thankful to you, sir, and thanks to everyone. Uh, it's very special for uh, ISEP as we, the short form of Indian Society of Evolutionary Biologists. Uh, we are very proud to be partnering with uh, this university because, first of all, you have a lot of young talent. The department is very well known, doing stellar quality work. So uh, again, our sincere thanks, and we are very happy to be here. We hope that this is one of the first programs that we partner with the university, and this relationship will continue in the future. About the uh, society itself, the idea for society had been around for a very long time. Uh, historically, if you look at Indian research, especially in ecology, evolution, behavior, we have had a lot of contribution. One of the people who have done a lot of contribution is sitting right here on the dais. Um, We have had societies of, for example, animal behavior, which have been around for a long time. But we have not had a society for evolutionary biology. So the first talk of this society, as far as I can remember, was way back in the time when I was a PhD student, uh, 1997. 
and talks went on, various discussions went on, various efforts happened. But finally, after about 21 years, we could formalize a society. The society was formally established in June of 2018 um, with Professor Raghavendra Gadakar as the president and Professor H. A. Randanath as the vice president of the society. Two very well known people uh, across the world doing fantastic evolutionary biology related work from India. So it has been about three and a half years since the establishment of the society. The society has had a um, few major focuses, one of which of course is to promote research in evolutionary biology in India, to bring people doing evolutionary biology related work and people who are not really scientists but are interested in evolutionary biology together. So we are different in terms of uh, how we look at our members. We are not uh, open only to professional evolutionary biologists, but we are also open to people who are interested in evolutionary biology. Our major focus has of course been outreach, especially to younger students to get them interested in evolutionary biology, maybe even in a career in evolutionary biology. Towards that, we have multiple programs, uh, one of which is, of course, to uh, offer scholarships so that young students like you can attend various conferences. Even for this conference, ISEP has offered uh, multiple fellowships. Um, we'll continue to do that. We also have programs of mentorship and summer research, uh, which we will announce in the due course. For all the young people here, I invite you to look up the website of the society. It is evolutionindia.org. Please look up our website. You will look, uh, get to know about our society. You can become members of the society. It is open to all of you. And please participate in the various programs that are going to be organized by the society. If you have any questions, just email us and we'll be happy to get back to you. Once again, I would like to thank everybody in the university for allowing us to partner with you. I should uh, thank and congratulate uh, Dr. Bharti and his team uh, who have been working a lot to put this conference together. So special thanks to them. Thanks to all of you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Prasad. Now it's time to honor our distinguished guest, Professor Meva Singh. So may I request Honorable Vice Chancellor to honor Professor Meva Singh. I'm 
Honorable Vice Chancellor and a very close friend of mine, Professor Arvind, colleagues and friends. You know, as a matter of fact, I came to know after I came here, sitting here, that is a little cheap guest. I didn't know about it at all. Uh, I am I'm a very good speaker, and you would know it at 2 30 in the afternoon, but only when I have contents. And I'm a horrible speaker when I don't have contents. You know, so since I don't have any contents, you know, only two types of people can speak good. One who are academicians when they are well prepared, and second, as the election time, and only politicians. <laughs> I am not a politician, but uh, you know, I want to tell you one thing by my whole association. I am a student of uh, Government College Malayal Kotla, which was Punjabi University, Patiala. I did my bachelor's degree, then I went to Chandigarh to do my master's, made a temple, then I went to the United States for my postdocs, etc. But 50 years ago, I think slightly more than 50 years ago, this hall was not built. I was asking Arvind, how old is this hall? I stood in one of these halls and it was intercollegiate cultural competition and I won the gold medal of Punjabi University of Patiala in poetry recitation. <laughs> and I still remember the title of my poem, poem was Siva Mud Badan Lag Janda Tema Shamshan Hard Jana. So this was this was more than 50 years ago in 1970. But poem is not here. Oh, they would pull here. Anyways, uh, one thing I just want to say something about you say you would hear insect about enough about insects and evolutionary biology for the next three days. So we don't have to talk about that. But one thing I just want to impress upon is something which Professor Arvind and the whole team of Punjabi University Patiala has done is this introduction of uh, integrated courses, five year integrated courses. I know all universities in the country, except ISERs which have these kinds of programs and some universities like at Mysore, we have physics program, molecular biology program, but only some one or two programs here and there. But suddenly starting so many integrated programs and where so many departments are available, the students can have so many options to study so many things. This is really, you know, which Professor Arvind and all the colleagues in the university really deserve congratulations. Nowhere in the country. And you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a paradox in the country if you see today. You see, on one hand, now we have got a new NEP, the National Education Policy. You know, one most important thing in the National Education Policy, that research should become a component from the bachelor's degree level, like the ISIS. You know, Prasad knows and so many ISIS students have worked with me at, in summers. And when they were bachelor's degree students, and they have published in top international journals with me, because I am a wildlife biologist, so these students have been going and working with my students in jungles, right from, uh, you know, Anamnai Tiger Reserves to Silent Valley National Park to Nicobar Islands, and they have all published articles in top international journals when they were bachelor's degree students. So, on one hand, we are emphasizing this, and on the other hand, you have what about NAC, right? National Assessment and Accreditation Council. Now, if you see their revised program now, you know, we have certain scores for uh, different things. And as far as the colleges are concerned, you know that the scores for research for college teachers are reduced almost to zero. So, we have one policy which is saying college teachers don't have to do any research at all. They can get promotions, become associate professors and professors. And one agency is doing this, the other agency is telling you should make, uh, you know, research an integral part of the bachelor's program. Well, this is the kind of thing which is going on in this country, but I am very glad. So I again want to congratulate uh, you people about uh, this uh, five-year integrated programs. All the best. And I will keep my vocal cords ready for the afternoon talk. And I'm going to be here for uh, all the three days. And interestingly, the only person who is going to be a physical speaker, and the only person who is going to be present for all the three days, everybody is going to be in this boring, what I call uh, the online program. But anyway, we have to live with all these things. Thank you very much and uh, all the best for three days. Thank you, sir, for your inspiring words. Now, may I request Professor Arvind to say a few words.
It's an important uh, occasion that uh, Punjabi University Patiala is organizing an international conference and that also in collaboration with the society, the Evolution Society. So um, on the one hand, in some sense, the Evolutionary Society is the Pan-Indian Society and I'm thankful that they have chosen Punjabi University Patiala as you heard how it happened. But I must say the credit goes to the previous Vice Chancellor and the team because this all was decided much before I came on the scene. <coughs> And uh, uh, such events are important because Punjabi University Patiala has a very old history of uh, uh, doing science, science research and science teaching. From the very uh, beginning of the university, science departments were considered very important and they came up in a big way. So whether it is our botany department or zoology department or physics department, some unique features are there in this university and those who have come from outside, I would like you to go around, look at our botanical garden, museums, the astronomy observatory, and so on. There are many things in this university which are not typically there uh, in a standard university. Uh, having said that, uh, for the broader national and international audience, I must say that uh, the main focus of the university is to develop the Punjabi language. It's a Punjabi university, it's uh, named after the language of this region and it has been doing that work for a very long time and a lot of contributions towards the development of Punjabi language has come uh, from Punjabi university. Uh, for the past few years there has been a certain uh, kind of a um, slowdown in these activities and instead of going into those details I would say that we are bringing all those activities up to speed. And the motto we have given is to bring Punjabi up to speed with the, with the new world. Punjabi just in Gary and Punjabi no Samedi Han Dibanona. And there are three specific things that we would like to do in that context. Number one, have material of every kind of knowledge and science and everything available in Punjabi for research as well as for pedagogy. So we are going to restart these activities which Punjabi University used to do, to do this. For this, we are not uh, only restricting to Punjabi, we do not mind bringing in other uh, local languages. For example, we are signing up an MOU with Azim Premji University, where a large number of standard high class textbooks across disciplines will be translated into Hindi and Punjabi. So that is one. Then. Uh, Building upon the work which has happened in Punjabi University in the past 25-30 years to develop softwares for Punjabi, uh, we want to bring up, bring that again up to speed in a big way so that uh, using computers, mobile phones, websites, apps and all that in Punjabi becomes uh, simple and everyone adapts to that. And third thing we want to do is to make use of local language fashionable because this whole idea that you know, uh, you don't have jobs for people who know Punjabi, but if every drug company is forced to print the drug names in Punjabi on the strip, they will have to hire graphic designers who can do graphic designing in Punjabi. So it is not a one way, it is a two way thing. It is not a question of having jobs, one has to, fashion creates jobs. So if Punjabi becomes fashionable, a large number of jobs will be automatically get created for people who can do those fashionable things in Punjabi. So this is our plan for uh, bringing up uh, the Punjabi language into forefront and for usage uh, for every kind of knowledge generation and pedagogy. Uh, as Professor Mayawa Singh mentioned, we have started these new five-year integrated programs, which are interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary programs. The programs have been started in physical and chemical sciences, biological sciences, mathematical and uh, computing sciences, social sciences, languages, and performing in video arts. And uh, the kind of range we have in these programs, uh, I think maybe we are the only university in the country who is doing it. When we talk about languages, we mean Punjabi, Hindi, English, Persian, Urdu, and Sanskrit. And every student in the language group will learn all these six languages. So those are the kind of programs I'm talking about. When we talk about arts, it goes all the way from fine arts to filmmaking. And the interdisciplinary part is that every student of fine arts will learn some biology and every student of biology will learn some music. 
So those kind of flexibilities have been built into this program. And uh, well, it is started now with 800 students on campus in this program. And I think it will go very far if we all work together uh, strongly. And I would like to specifically appeal to those who have joined today with the university that if you want to plug in into our programs by providing your academic resources coming and lecturing and so on, we would very much welcome that. Because if we really want it to become a flagship program in the country, we have to pool in a lot of resources even from outside our campus. Uh, lastly, I want to, uh, you see, there is a lot of hard work which comes uh, by being vice chancellor of a university, but some privileges also come. So I'm going to step out of my domain of university administration and quantum physics and say that uh, evolutionary biology is a very important uh, subject. Uh, the not just evolutionary biology, the whole idea of uh, natural selection and uh, adaptations is something which uh, takes time to learn. And as a as a um, principle of as, as a domain of knowledge and as a philosophical uh, uh, tool, it is very important for everyone, not just uh, biologists or evolutionary biologists. Everyone who wants to think about things has to know how evolutionary biology works. So let me give you one example that I have been kind of uh, grappling with. And see, all sciences come in. When you talk about uh, adaptations, you can't really say, oh, I don't know physics. So let me in two minutes tell you what I have in mind. See, human brain consumes a lot of energy in our body. You know how much? It's about 20, 30 watts. That looks small. But it is 20% of the entire energy consumption in the body. So no muscle, no physical activity can can consume as much energy as brain can. Which means keeping a large brain is, is very expensive in terms of, you know, load on the organism. So these are all terms coming from evolutionary biology in some sense. And human brain size has been increasing. I mean, these experts can correct me, but it has been increasing, increasing, increasing as we developed into what we call humans. Do you all know this? All students of biology know it. However, about 5,000 years ago, the brain size began to shrink. And the brain we have now is actually smaller than our ancestors which lived about 5,000, 6,000 years ago. So the question is why? Of course, if you can reduce, have smaller brain size, it is good for you. If you can do everything with a smaller brain compared to a larger brain, it's good for you because you save energy and energy is very important. Energy comes from good. So again, these are all principles of adaptation and so on. Now, the, what links this shrinking with Punjabi University is that now it is almost established that uh, as soon as the grammar-based languages became prevalent, when we began to use language to have inter-brain communication so that several brains can do tasks together, you know, at, that's the state where we could actually manage with a smaller brain. So this has been a, I mean, I have been fascinated by this. That this is exactly like saying that when you want to set up a large computing system today, each node may not be very powerful, but that together the computer is powerful. So as soon as society developed and ways and means of storing knowledge outside our brains in terms of written and libraries and books and all that started, and more than that, when brains began to communicate with each other and started working collectively. Now all this is uh, an understanding which comes from... Uh, evolutionary biology and therefore it's so important for human existence thinking and so on even more so this gets connected with the conference because insects are also societies and uh, recently people have talked about you know ant brains and the brain of the of an entire ant colony so you see these things translate not uh, just to computer systems it they translates to translate to insect society so, so in some sense, in my opinion, uh, evolutionary biology is an interdisciplinary field. Uh, you could have talk about evolution of computer viruses. And then you can start asking the question, computer viruses, do they, what kind of laws they follow in terms of their change? And you will see the principles of uh, these evolutions could be very similar. You can talk about evolution of languages. And languages also change over time, and there are pressures uh, under which they change. And so, so these concepts are very broad uh, based concepts. 
So therefore, I would encourage that uh, in our five-year program, for example, we should organize one or two talks on principles of evolution for the entire group of 800 students across disciplines to give them an idea uh, what is this fascinating uh, way of looking at the world called evolutionary thinking or evolutionary biology. So since I, I was not invited to give a talk, uh, I have already taken much more time. I really uh, thank the organizers for asking me to come here in the morning and talk to you. And I hope that you will really enjoy this conference in the coming three days and you will go back enlightened. And as I always say, the outcome of a conference should be that some research gets sparked off on Punjabi University campus as an outcome of the interactions which happen over here in the coming three days. Thank you very much. So, thank you, Professor Alvin, and that reminds me of a statement by famous geneticist Dogwensky that is nothing in biology makes sense except in the light of evolution. So uh, this conference is dedicated to great naturalists and evolutionary biologists who pioneered a lot of work on evolutionary biology in sex societies and of course I consider him as my mentor, Professor Edward Wilson, who passed away recently. So this is dedicated to Professor Edward Wilson and a lot of speakers are there who are well known in their respective fields. We have Professor Rosemary Grant, Professor Peter Grant, the husband wife who worked on Galapagos Island whole life. And if you go through internet, you will find a couple of videos, a couple of talks, and uh, they are fellows of Royal Society also. Then we have Professor Stock, uh, Scott Edward, who worked on birds. He will discuss about phylogeny and other aspects of birds, their origin, like that. And uh, now uh, Professor Raghavinder, he will talk about insect societies. And Professor Meva Singh, of course, will talk about primate psychology in the evening session. So now, may I request Dr. Gurinder Kaur Waliya to propose a vote of thanks. Thank you, Dr. Parvati. Good morning, everybody. Honorable Professor Arvin, Vice Chancellor of the University, respected Professor Meva Singh, Chief Guest of the Conference, Professor Parsad, Secretary, ISCB. Dr. Bharti, head of the department, and all the participants and dear students. It's my privilege to have been asked to propose a vote of thanks on this occasion. I, on the behalf of Department of Zoology and Environmental Sciences, first of all, I extend a very hearty vote of thanks to our Vice Chancellor for being catalyst that stimulated us to do our best and standing as pillar of strength. Today, we had an opportunity to hear your thoughts and this will surely be going to encourage us in our future events. I extend my deepest gratitude to Professor Meva Singh, Chief Guest of the occasion, who spared valuable time from his busiest schedule to pace the event. I am immensely thankful to Professor Prasad, Secretary of ISEB, for his continuous encouragement to make this event successful. I am short of words for Dr. Bharti head of the department for the involvement and willingness to um, organize this conference. An event like this cannot happen overnight. The wheels start rolling weeks ago. It required planning and a bird's eye for the details. I need to mention my deepest sense of appreciation to Indian Society of Environmental Biology, especially Professor Suchirit Day, for his continuous support and hard work to organize this event. We are fortunate enough to be backed by a team of very proactive and dedicated staff, sincere and hardworking research scholars, students of the department. I am thankful to them for their cooperation. I would also like to thank the people who work behind the scene to make this event happen, especially Axion of the University, U6 staff, Science Auditorium staff, computer staff and EMRC for the coverage. Lastly, I am thankful to all to be here. I hope you will enjoy and your stay will be enjoyable in the campus. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Gurinder Walia. Now, before we rise for national anthem, after that we will have a cup of tea 
and along the outside science auditorium. Then at 11.30 we will assemble again for a talk by Professor Raghavinder that, uh, that will be a tribute to Edward Wilson followed by his talk. Then uh, uh, almost at 1 there will be lunch. 2.30 we will assemble for Professor Meva Singh's talk which will be uh, offline or broadcast live also all over the world. So may I request you all to stand up for national anthem. Punjab Singh Gujarat Maratha Ravira Pukkala Banga Vindya Himachala Yamuna Ganga Uchala Chala Dhikaranga Tava Shubha Name Jage Tava Shubha Aashish Maage Dahe Tava Jaya Gatha जनगण मंगल गायक जय हे भारत भाग्य विधाता जय हे 